What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 88 and we start today's episode off with some player training, yes, new club, new country, same shit, me starting an episode off with player training, I mean, name a more iconic duo than Docs and starting an episode off with player training, so uh, some player training set up there, we had uh, Shaw, we had Tony, we had uh, the young lad Riccardi and uh, also Tonali uh, getting some drills as well and uh, following that we saw that Nzonzi has been sold, he's back in English football as he leaves to join Aston Villa and also Reading uh, putting a bid for Maxime Gonlons as they're going to try and take the veteran French midfielder to Nadeski Stadium as uh, Everton also putting a bid here for Danilo Pereira as well our Portuguese midfielder now he's 83 rated and 31 years old and he wasn't on the transfer list however I did decide to try and negotiate with the lads from Goodison Park see if we get a decent fee for him in the end we agreed a 24 million pound fee uh, with the Toffees for Pereira and to be honest like Diawara who we sold to Schalke in the last episode I gotta be honest it was kind of I wouldn't say a regrettable sale but I do like his stats and maybe we would have been better served with keeping the Portuguese midfielder here for a bit of dressing room leader leader experience I guess I'm, I'm not too sure but so that's what you see he looks like he's on his way to uh, Everton though and also Otamendi had a bit here from uh, Lanús they want to take him back to his native Argentina now 35 years old and 74 rated he had two bids here one from uh, the uh, the Argentine side and also Union Berlin uh, wanted to take him to Germany as well. 74 rated Otamendi and uh, 35 years old now. I think I thought he was I thought he was actually going to retire at the end of the season. He's not, but he's out of contract at the end of the season, and I've got no plans to keep him here. But uh, Gonlons did agree a shock deal in the end. He's off to the Mladenovic Stadium to join Reading. I thought that was an incredibly weird transfer. That Gonlons going to the Mladenovic Stadium. It's like Lewis Holtby going to Ewood Park this year of Blackburn Rovers, and uh, also Danilo Pereira did go to Everton as well. So two players leaving to. England, one to Mladenovic Stadium, one to Goodison Park, Pereira and Gonlons, two of our holding midfielders have gone and uh, the impact of selling Pereira is of course a lot more significant than the impact of selling Gonlons but as Danilo goes with the two sales combining there that bumps our budget up to around 28 to 30 million pounds around that and with a few days still left in the transfer window there's still some time to, bit, uh, to, uh, to bring some players in and obviously the player I'd want to buy is the player that you guys have been recommending and that's this guy right here Lorenzo Pellegrini now playing for Villarreal of course once of Roma has since moved on in the game I've seen a lot of comments in the first three episodes of Roma from you guys saying please bring Pellegrini back to the Stadio Olimpico I'll give it my best shot but I'm not sure if we'll be able to afford it. We might need to make one or two sales if we're going to do that. But Real is, is of course way out of our price range I doubt we'll be able to get the lad from Benfica either so I think those two on the shortlist there are just there for show. And that will be able to pick either of those guys up. But Pellegrini, I'll do my best to bring him in. But I'm not sure if it's going to happen in this window. It might be a January thing or perhaps a next season type of signing. But uh, still, first game of today's episode as we will take on Bologna. Away from home here in North Italy. Travelling up the country on the back of our win against Napoli in the, stad uh, in the Stadio San Paolo. Uh, in the first game of the season. Buzzing to get off to winning ways of Roma. Exactly what we want wanted and the clean sheet and this man Ivan Tony getting the first goal of the season as well the game winner making it 1-0 29 minutes into the game oh I dropped the control at this point because I thought it went in Tony smacked the boys to the side netting as it was still 0-0 I thought Ivan made it 2-2 two two. couldn't uh, couldn't hit the boy on the right side of the net though as it was still goalless as he smacked the side of the net and in the 39th minute well we got away with this one trying to play out from the back gave it away cheaply with Ivan Tony funnily enough and Paul Lopez what a save this was by the current interim captain here. I'm still not sure who it will be. I'm waiting for you guys to let me know in the episode you guys would have seen this morning and uh, yeah, Paolo Lopez making a brilliant save there. Keeps it 0-0 perhaps making his claim that he should keep the armband permanently. Who knows? But uh, goal is still fantastic save there. So like against Napoli, goal is at the break and in the second half we almost got ourselves in front right away. Oli Shaw going on those aggressive runs, crossing it to the far post but Zaniola denied by a fabulous save by Angus Gunn. The English English goalkeeper making a brilliant save there as the former Southampton man makes a great stop on the line with his left boot. So still 0-0 and 20 minutes to go. Still deadlocked and still goalless here. Bologna would take a shock lead. Idrissi drills it in and the hosts would get themselves in front in the closing stages of the game around the same time as when we struck in Naples. Brilliant little through ball after a couple of little step overs there. A wonderful little assist and as Idrissi latches onto it, he drills it past uh, uh, Paolo Lopez into the bottom corner no chance for the Spaniard 
and Roma, after spending over uh, over 300 million pounds on 10 new signings, are trailing in North Italy, and the lack of creativity in this game was a major, major concern. Once again, Cutrone fired a blank. Tony could not rescue us this time, and as the final whistle ran around the stadium, Bologna had beaten us by a goal to nil, and over 300 million pounds spent on 10 new players. Two games in, we've already had a loss and we've already fired a blank. Unbelievable. 1 0 defeat away in North Italy. And of course, come the final whistle, all the cameras were panning to me. This is the club that I've come to to try and rebuild. Well, I have rebuilt the side. It's my team. I've built the team how I want it. Roma gave me the green light to do whatever I want. They gave me the cash. I sold the players. I bought these players in. This is the responsibility of me. If we don't perform this season and win a domestic double, there's only one man associated with this club that the blame is going to fall on. And rightfully so. And that's me. A 1-0 defeat away at Bologna. Again, the lack of creativity in that game was really, really concerning. Very few clear-cut chances being created. Sure, was really our most creative player, a left wing back in that game. Not good enough one bit of Cutrone as well. Two blanks. I've got to be honest, I'm not getting all of him whatsoever. And for Ivan Tony's sake, left wing, inside forward. Listen, the guy's got the stats to play wherever he, wherever he wants, but the fact of the matter is, that's not his best position. He's a striker. So for the next game against Lazio in the Derby be there, the I'm definitely thinking we're going to have to play Ivan Tony up top and put Cutrone on the bench because right now Ivan he's just he's just not suited to the wing he can play there he's got the stats to play there he's got the agility he's got the balance he's got the pace and he's got the end product but I'm sorry he's the golden boot winner back to back in the Premier League so far he's the only player to scratch for us this season Tony is an out and out striker that's where he plays his best football he should not be out there isolated on the left wing so because of that I'm going to play him as a striker and What's 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 that what's that noise I can hear? Oh it's, oh, it's the Champions League theme song. The Champions League theme song because the groups have been drawn as well for the Champions League. As I was advancing in the calendar, the groups have been drawn and Roma in their first year with me in charge in the Champions League have got Chelsea, Sevilla and Lokomotiv Moscow in Group F of the Champions League. The English side who last season they had in the group stages and lost out to them in a place for a qualifying place. Sevilla, the Spanish side, and Lokomotiv Moscow, the Russian side. And as for Sheffield United, I had to find out who they've been drawn with. Oh, the Blades! They've got Real Madrid in their first ever Champions League group. Plus RB Leipzig, the German side, and also Besiktas, the Turkish side. So that's going to be tough for the Blades. I anticipate them finishing in third in that group. But come on, Sheffield United you can make it through that and I think we can make it for our group as well we'll be kicking off away in Russia against Lokomotiv Moscow then Chelsea and then Sevilla is our third group game we take on them back to back and uh, Chelsea I think away at Stamford Bridge is going to be our final game of the six but it's not going to be an easy group no doubt about it but I, I think we've got enough quality to get through that group you know if not top then certainly in second. But I, I, I personally think we should be going for the top spot in that group. I think we've got enough quality to make it through. However, after starting the campaign off with one win and one defeat and only the one goal on the board so far, well, for our second and final game of today's episode, our first Derby della Capitale against Lazio here at the Stadio Olimpico, we needed to make sure we would bounce back here for our first official home game, even though, of course, we share the stadium with these boys and win the Derby in our our first one in charge here of AS Roma. So it was so fitting. Our first home game would be the derby. The excitement, but also the pressure as well after that shock defeat away in North Italy to Bologna. How would we start this game when I was complaining about a lack of creativity and Shaw being our most creative player away at Bologna? Three minutes in, Oli down left down side on a trademark run, taken down by Eric Dyer, a spot kick given. Ivan Tony would stand up and take it. Our regular penalty taker at Sheffield United. And oh, it was an abysmal penalty by our number nine. No point waving your arms around, mate. It was your fault. He just completely scuffed it. Awful spot kick. I think the goalkeeper had to readjust his body there to make the save. He almost dived past it. Awful penalty. Turned behind by Stratoshka. And Roma missed the chance. Str 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 I can't pronounce the name. But it's 0-0. And Roma missed the chance to go a goal up. Courtesy of the shocker. Who would then make amends in the 21st 
last minute. Oh, Ivan Tony makes it 1-0. He can't score from dead ball situations from 12 yards, but rolled a ball into his feet, back to goal, and watched the magic happen. You see Shaw bouncing around like a little kid. I was doing that on the sidelines because we've seen that for three and a half years in Yorkshire. The Roma fans are getting their first taste of it. It's one of Tony's trademark moves. The dummy through the legs on the turn and the strike into the top corner. What a way to make amends from Ivan Tony. Wonderful goal and what a way to respond after that abysmal penalty in the early stages. We're in front for the first time in the game with a lead would only last 13 minutes. Lazio back on level terms in the 34th minute as Josh King, the former Bournemouth forward, was played forward and a Norwegian international drills it underneath the body of Paolo Lopez and finds at the back of the net. Once again, our back line not exactly looking organised out there and Lazio had found their response. Roma won, Lazio won. As we headed into the break, tied at half-time, I couldn't see it finishing that way. I was pretty confident someone was going to win it in the second half. And in the second half, 18 minutes after the restart, once again, Shaw's having a brilliant game here. Plays it into Mandragora, who's tripped a foul inside the area, no doubt about it. it was a bit of a theatrical dive by Rolando Mandragora, wasn't it? The way he just flopped there. A little bit of a dive there. Definitely a, uh, a contender for the uh, fall on the floor award, no doubt about it. But either way, a penalty as second of the game. Ivan Tony says, give me the ball. I'll make amends this time. Fuck yes, he will. What a penalty from Ivan Tony, And no surprise, directly after that, he runs to celebrate with the fans on the advertising hoardings. Oh, he has arrived at the Serie A and it's only taken him three games to show the fans here at the Stadio Lemco what they're in store for with their new number nine. What a spot kick into the bottom corner. Fluffed these lines in the opening five minutes, but that right there is a show of a true Truly mentally strong character. An abysmal penalty in the early stage. It's the same game. We're back on level terms. But he wants the ball. He wants to take the penalty. And what a finish as well. Roma 2, Lazio 1. And Ivan Tony's brace ensures we would get the three points and win our first Derby della Capitale at the Stadio Olimpico. Definitely deserved a win at about it. We were the better team in this game and dominated possession too. Not the ball around really nicely in this one. But for Tony take as well. Missing that penalty in the early stages. How does the shocker respond? Just like that, baby. Wonderful first goal for his second of the season and a penalty in the second half. Oh, the pressure on Ivan. Pressure? What pressure? Drills it in bottom corner, 2-1. What a win, and we beat Lazio for the first victory in our first ever derby. But that was this episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's dramatic episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the first four episodes of Roma, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode, which you will not want to miss very soon.